Hello, Internet. My name is Marcus, and this is It's Up and Running. Today, we are going to be doing a review on a new keyboard that I have. Another keyboard, I guess. But this one is a little bit different from your usual keyboards. It is this. Uh -huh. Oh, a little box. But you open it. It usually doesn't creak like that, but there it is. It is a foldable keyboard. So this foldable keyboard is made by Jellycomb. This is called the Jellycomb B003B Foldable Bluetooth Keyboard. This keyboard is currently $35 on the Jellycomb website, and it's different from every other keyboard because it folds. Eh. Plus, it's pretty small. Plus, as you can see, it has a little trackpad on it. And I like the little trackpad. I wish it was a little bit bigger, but we'll get into that later on in the video. So, I'm going to be doing a three... Wait, it three good things. <laughs> three bad things. A comparison. And a verdict. So, a three, two, one review. Alright, let's get it started. So, on to the good things. Number one, the build quality. The build quality of this foldable keyboard is actually pretty good. It's small and very lightweight, and even folded, it feels kind of solid. It doesn't feel like if you drop it, it's going to break, which is a good thing. Um, and even open, it feels very solid here too. I mean, I don't think that I would classify this as being a rugged keyboard, but at the same time, it's a pretty good keyboard still. Good thing number two, the size. This is roughly the same size as my cell phone, and my cell phone is a Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. So it's a bigger phone, but this is roughly the same size as that phone. So anywhere that you can put your phone, most likely you can put this folding keyboard, which jumps into a pretty good um, a use case, wherein if you want to type on your cell phone or on a tablet, this would be great because you can actually fold it up and it's roughly the same size as your cell phone. Good thing number three is that it has a very good battery. So I've been using this off and on for roughly the past two months. Um, and it is actually a very good uh, battery because I haven't had to charge it once. Um, it keeps a charge for a pretty long time. Um, and you don't have to worry about battery too much. So you could take this little keyboard, put it in a purse or put it in a bag and not have to worry about having to recharge it. Okay, on to the bad things. Number one, this thing has some interestingly shaped keys. Okay, so most of the keys are actually full size keys, which is fine, but towards the creases, the keys kind of shrink down and they shrink to roughly half the size of a full-size key. More specifically, the T, like Tom, and the V, like Victor, those two keys are half the size of a regular key when typing. This does take some time to get used to, um, but it is definitely um, noticeable at first. Issue number two, the trackpad. As you can see here, the trackpad, it is on this little floppy uh, side here. But the trackpad only goes up to here. I'll try to get closer in. The trackpad only goes about halfway up. I really wish that Jellycomb would have increased the trackpad size pretty much all the way up. I think that that would have made the trackpad a little bit easier to use. Um, but it is 
something that's really not that big of a problem. It's just that you definitely notice it at first. Issue number three. The, let me see, the left portion of the keyboard, which is going to be this one right here, is slightly lower than the middle portion. And I believe that they did this that way when it closes, it closes nice and flat. But because of this, actually I'm going to try to see if I can kind of show you guys, yeah but it's slightly lower. But because of this, when you're typing, you have to kind of adjust to typing on this lower half of the keyboard over here. I mean, it's not something that's like a deal breaker, but at the same time, it is something that you're definitely gonna notice at first. And actually, that's the same thing that goes for most of the compromises that you make with this keyboard. They're not deal breakers, but they're definitely things that you're going to have to get used to. All right, on to the comparison stage. So for a comparison with this keyboard, I, ha I had to find something that was a smaller size keyboard, but still had a mouse, uh, I guess you could say, uh, built into it. So the closest thing that I had, which I think is kind of comparable, is da -da -da, my Logitech K400R keyboard. So I bought this keyboard for my entertainment uh, home theater computer phase I was going through for like a while. Mm -hmm. I think that most tech people probably have like that same phase. Most people are probably still in that phase. Anyway, so I bought this keyboard because one is a Logitech keyboard, so it it actually has pretty good name recognition. Uh, and two, I needed something to connect to my home theater PC from the couch. So comparing this to the foldable keyboard, uh, this keyboard. It is better in some ways and worse in others. Um, one, it's a full-size keyboard. So there's no compromises on typing or else on space. And the trackpad is actually full-size too. So, I mean, like, that's a great thing. Uh, two, um, it's, it's a traditional functioning keyboard. So I would have no problem at all using this keyboard if I had to use it on, on a different computer or also on a PC for like a little bit of, of a time. So that's a good thing. Compromises though are that one, it's a full size keyboard. So when you're not using it, you have to find somewhere to put it. This doesn't fit in a bag that easily. This can't fit in your pocket unless you have some really big pants, which that's a whole different thing, maybe. Anyway, um, and Two, this one uses a USB dongle. So the foldable keyboard is actually Bluetooth, but since this one uses the USB dongle, you have to find some way to actually connect your Bluetooth device to a USB dongle, which is not always easy to do. So, on to the last part, which is gonna be the verdict. All right, so the verdict on this keyboard is definitely subjective based on your use case. So I will give a strong buy it to anyone that needs a portable keyboard for a tablet, for a cell phone, or else even for using Samsung DeX, which I have actually been uh, using it on. So, I mean, that's actually a pretty good idea. Um, it, it is a great keyboard for people that do not need the full functionality of a laptop or also of a desktop, but at the same time, do want a keyboard and a mouse built into a small package. Now, for other people 
they have a full-size desktop or a laptop, I would not suggest buying this mini keyboard. I mean, granted, it does do a whole lot of the same things of a regular keyboard, but you are compromising functionality for size. And that is something that, unless you have to, that you really shouldn't do. All right. Well, if you have any questions or comments, please, uh, please post them below and um, I will check them out. Um, for It's Up and Running, I'm Marcus, and talk to you later. Bye-bye.